It appears it was a fight with another girl inside one of these apartments that led to Nyla Lightfoot today being stabbed in the neck and chest area and dying here early this morning. Nyla Lightfoot was like just about any eighth grader. She made A's and B's. She was friends with everybody. Mom says she got into the occasional teen girl disagreements too, but nothing could prepare Antoinette Carter for the call that came less than a month ago, learning another 13-year-old girl had stabbed her daughter at their apartment complex. About 10 minutes later, she was gone. It felt like I have a hole in my heart that cannot be healed. Three states her family has fled from because she can't control her temper. Until finally she comes to your community, it takes a lot. The jury could have given anywhere from probation to 40 years, but chose 25. Nyla's mother was satisfied at the sentence. But as for understanding the crime that took her young daughter. Welcome to Explore Crimes. Please subscribe and hit the bell icon for more stories. Nyla Lightfoot was a vibrant and promising 14-year-old girl from Fort Worth, Texas. She was known for her bright smile, kind heart, and a personality that could light up any room. Academically gifted, Nyla consistently earned straight A's and B's, was well regarded by her teachers and peers alike. She had a natural curiosity for learning and was an active participant in her classes. Outside of school, Nyla was deeply involved in extracurricular activities. She sang in the school choir, played on the soccer team, and enjoyed spending time with her friends. Nyla was also known for her inclusive and warm-hearted nature. She was the type of friend who would stand up for others and make everyone feel welcome. Nyla's life revolved around her family, school, and friends. She had big dreams for her future and was always eager to help others and spread joy. Her mother, Antoinette Carter, often spoke proudly of Nyla's achievements and her friendly, generous spirit. Despite her young age, Nyla had a maturity and compassion that set her apart. She was a beloved daughter, friend, and student whose life was tragically cut short, leaving a void in the hearts of all who knew her. Nyla Lightfoot had a close but complicated friendship with the 13-year-old girl who ultimately took her life. Like many teenage friendships, theirs was filled with moments of laughter, shared secrets, and the occasional disagreement. Despite these ups and downs, Nyla and her friends spent a lot of time together, bonding over their shared interests and dreams for the future. The 13-year-old, whose name remains undisclosed due to her age, came from a troubled background. Her family had moved multiple times across different states, primarily due to her behavioral issues and difficulty managing anger. Despite this, Nyla's mother, Antoinette Carter, allowed the friendship, believing it was a normal part of growing up. Nyla's kind and inclusive nature made her a supportive friend, always willing to stand by others and help them through tough times. She often tried to be a positive influence on her friend, even when the 13-year-old's temper caused friction. The tragic events leading up to Nyla's death began with a simple sleepover request. The 13-year-old wanted to stay the night at Nyla's house, but Nyla's mother, Antoinette, said no. This seemingly small refusal sparked a chain reaction of events that ended in horror. Feeling hurt and rejected, the 13-year-old became more insistent, leading to a heated argument. On the night of the incident, the 13-year-old demanded that Nyla come to her apartment to pick up some clothes she had left behind. This demand turned into a heated argument around 4 a.m. What began as a verbal confrontation quickly escalated. Reports indicate that the situation spiraled out of control, resulting in the 13-year-old grabbing a knife and violently attacking Nyla. Around 4 a.m., the verbal confrontation took a violent turn. Neighbors later recounted hearing raised voices and the sounds of a struggle. The argument, which had started with shouting, became physical. As the tension peaked, the 13-year-old grabbed a knife in a fit of rage. Nyla tried to defend herself, but she was overpowered by her friend. The fight grew more intense, with the 13-year-old attacking Nyla with the knife. The brutality of the attack left Nyla with multiple stab wounds, primarily to her neck and chest. The horrifying violence of the scene was something no one could have anticipated between two young teenagers. The neighbors, who had been woken by the commotion, called the police. Upon arrival, they found a chaotic and distressing scene. They found 14-year-old Nyla Lightfoot lying on the floor, 
severely injured with multiple stab wounds to her neck and chest. Emergency responders quickly assessed the situation and attempted to stabilize Nyla before rushing her to JPS Hospital. Despite their efforts, Nyla was pronounced dead shortly after arriving at the hospital. A 14-year-old girl has been stabbed to death during a fight in Fort Worth. Hard to fathom when you say this out loud, but it probably was an argument we hear over spending the night at a friend's house that may have led to a teenager's death. Police in Fort Worth tonight investigating the stabbing death of a 14-year-old girl. Early this morning, it was on the city's south side. The suspect demanded Lightfoot come over and get clothes she'd left at her apartment and that's when the two got into a fight. She whooped you. You should have just accepted it. But now you had to go back in the house and get a knife to come back and stab me and kill my baby. Now I'm daughterless and my heart feel like it's just been ripped out and just stomped up. A couple of her classmates told me that the other girl involved in this incident is one of Lightfoot's close friends. They argue, the girls told me, but it has never ended up in a fight like it did this time. Into I wanted to spend the night at Nala house, but Nala said she couldn't have company, and and she went home, and she told her to come get her clothes, or she was gonna bleach them. And I guess Nala went to her in house, and she tried to get her clothes, and they started fighting, and, and she stabbed her. Now, the brother of the other girl involved told us that she actually ran from the apartment after the stabbing happened this morning, but that her parents were trying to get her back. Police told us this afternoon that they were investigating, but did not have anyone in custody. My baby was the sweetest little girl here. She Antoinette Carter back. spoke publicly for the first time about her 14-year-old daughter, Nyla Lightfoot, who was stabbed to death Tuesday during a fight with a 13-year-old friend. She made straight A's. She was friends with everybody. She didn't need this. The 13-year-old girl who killed Nyla was taken into custody right after the brutal attack. She was placed in a juvenile detention facility, and a hearing was quickly scheduled to decide if she should stay in custody or be allowed to go home. At the hearing, the judge had to decide if the 13-year-old should stay in detention because of the severity of her crime. Given how serious the attack was, the judge ruled that she should stay in the juvenile detention facility. This showed how serious the case was and set the tone for what was to come. 14-year-old Nyla Lightfoot died Tuesday at her Fort Worth apartment, and now a 13-year-old female friend is charged with her murder. The suspect and both girls' families were in juvenile court today. Fox 4's Brandon Todd is live tonight in Fort Worth with a story. Brandon. Heather, Steve, this was a detention hearing basically to decide whether or not that 13 year old girl would go home with her parents. Well, the judge said no, so she will stay here at the juvenile detention facility. There were other juveniles at this hearing, but she was the only one in handcuffs. The trial is complicated because of the girl's age. In Texas, you have to be at least 14 years old to be tried as an adult. So the 13 year old couldn't be tried in adult court. However, the Tarrant County District Attorney's Office known for being tough on juvenile crimes, aimed to get the maximum penalty for her. Three states her family has fled from because she can't control her temper. Until so finally she comes to your community, <clears throat> it takes a lot. The jury could have given anywhere from probation to 40 years, but chose 25. It's a super tragic case. The teenager's attorney, Frank Adler. She knew the punishment range. She knew the possible consequences. Of course, she's upset. A family friend told WFAA Nyla's mother was satisfied at the sentence. But as for understanding the crime that took her young daughter. I I guess I never will. Neighbors who had heard the fight and saw what happened afterward testified in court. Nyla's mother, Antoinette Carter, gave a heartfelt testimony about Nyla's life her accomplishments, and the deep void left by her death. She treated you like a sister that she did not have. You took my child, my only girl, leaving me with a hole in my heart. Nyla's mother spoke directly to her daughter's killer in juvenile court Friday, a girl who stabbed Nyla to death while fighting over a sleepover. He blessed me with an angel, and he took her. It was a tense trial. Extra security had to be brought in because of issues between the families. The defense focused on the 13-year-old's troubled background. They argued that her actions were due to a rough upbringing, mental health struggles, 
and a lack of proper support. They stressed the need for rehabilitation instead of just punishment because she was so young. After deliberation, the jury found the 13-year-old guilty of murder. Because of her age, she was sentenced to 25 years in a juvenile detention facility, the maximum penalty for a juvenile. And the girl. That's probably not the news that you wish to hear. Now 14, was sentenced to 25 years behind bars for murder. We aren't showing or identifying her because she was charged as a minor. Her mother told the court how her daughter mourns Nyla's death. Yeah, to a point where she wanted me to get her phone and just play videos of her and Nyla just to hear her voice. The parents of the 13-year-old were at the detention hearing but declined to comment. Juvenile Court Attorney Trent Lofton, who is not associated with this case but has experience on how such cases are handled, says the 13-year-old can't be tried as an adult. Texas law, you have to be at least the age of 14 years old where they can even consider certification or transferring you to an adult court. The Tarrant County District Attorney's Office has been historically aggressive when it comes to prosecuting individuals in a juvenile matter, especially in the case where a homicide or a murder is involved. The trial highlighted the need for better mental health support and early help for troubled kids. It served as a powerful reminder of the terrible outcomes that can happen when anger and behavior problems aren't addressed, urging communities to support at-risk children more effectively and with more care. Niall Lightfoot's tragic death has deeply impacted her family and the Fort Worth community. The trial brought a sense of justice, but the pain and loss remain. Nyla was a bright and kind young girl whose life was cut short in a horrific way. Her story underscores the importance of early intervention for mental health and behavioral issues in youth. This case serves as a reminder for communities to provide better support for troubled children to prevent future tragedies. Nyla's memory inspires efforts to create safer and more compassionate environments for all kids, turning grief into positive change. Remembering Nyla, we are reminded of our collective responsibility to ensure every child feels safe, supported, and valued. Thanks for watching. Like, share, comment, and subscribe. See you in the next video.